Everybody wants multiple streams of income. That sounds really awesome, especially during times of crisis, like right now when the stock market has crashed and 3 million people have lost their jobs. But what does it actually look like to build multiple streams of income so that you aren't reliant on your day job? Well, let's find out. Before we dive in, we wanted to let you know that this is actually a collaboration video with Kelly from Freedom in a Budget. So make sure to go check out her video on how she's built multiple income streams. And you can find that in the description below our video or on the end screen of this video. Now, you might think that building multiple income streams is just for adults, but that's not the case at all. Luckily, my parents did a really good job of helping me see multiple ways to make money, even as a kid. And this led to me trying all sorts of different things like selling bread to the neighbors, selling candy out of my backpack at school, and eventually teaching piano lessons and tutoring math. So if you want your kids to be overachievers, let them watch this part of the video. That's if you right. want them to be normal like me, just give them like a magnifying glass and a beetle and send them outside <laughs> to play. Then they're fine. But although I tried to make money in lots of different ways, none of these were really happening all at the same time. It really wasn't until 2014 that we started tacking on multiple streams of income. In 2014, we got married and Nick was finishing up his senior year of his mechanical engineering degree. And I was starting my first year of physical therapy school. So in that year, we had three streams of income. We had Nick's mechanical engineering internship, which was just a part-time part job. job. Yeah. And then we had um, Nick's scholarships, which thankfully engineering is a great place to be if you want to get some school scholarships. So that was a significant part of our income that year. And then we had my graduate assistantship, which is kind of like a scholarship in that they give you stipends to cover part of your school. Um, but it's not a scholarship because you have to work a certain amount of hours to get it. But that was a big part. And the reason we count that as income that year is because it covered more than half of yeah. your graduate school, which was a significant amount of money for us. So 2014, three streams of income. I feel like we should have had couponing as one of our income streams in 2014 because we had a lot. Of, we, like, we did some hardcore couponing. We did. We're not going to count it as an We're income We're not going to count that as income. But it was pretty intense. It, it significantly so reduced our grocery There was a bill, lot of hamburger though. helper in our closet. There was a lot of hamburger <laughs> helper. <laughs> okay, so in 2015, though, this is the first time where we really started to try some unconventional forms of making money outside of our day job. I've graduated. I took a full-time job that year, so my internship went away, but I got a full-time job to replace that. That's a much more fun income stream it's than a part-time It's a lot more internship. fun. It's a lot more fun. Uh, we did uh, credit card churning, which is where um, you basically apply for a ton of different credit cards to get the sign-up bonuses. And then you can do what's called manufactured spending, which is basically find a lot of different ways to spend a lot of money that you're not actually spending. Like for me, I traveled a lot for work, so I could put work reimbursable expenses on credit cards and then get reimbursed for those expenses and rack up the credit card points. Ultimately, you know, maybe it wasn't worth my time, but it was a legitimate income stream that year. But that's an important point that you brought up. In, in the end, we kind of analyzed that and figured out this is taking way too many hours yeah. for the money that it's bringing in. So we're not going to worry about credit card churning for the but, most part. But we had the right frame of mind that year of we don't want to just rely on a job. Let's start looking at other ways that we can make money that are maybe a little outside of the box. I also started a blog in 2015, uh, but we didn't make a single dime from the blog <laughs> that year. Uh, so I'm going to list it up people, here as an income stream. Like, well, we have a lot of zero dollar income streams. But but it had the potential to eventually okay. make income, well, a, as we'll see later on. So now we'll jump to 2016. We still have Nick's engineering job income. I'm still chugging along on my assistantship. And then we've still got credit card churning yeah, a little still bit. Doing a little Not bit. a ton, but it's there. And then um, Nick's blog has actually served as... Like a oops, resume yeah. of sorts. Yeah. yeah, so it's his resume and he's gotten some writing jobs from it. So that is actually bringing in money in 2016. Yeah, I landed my first freelance writing gig that year of $4,000, which is where I basically you know, showed my blog and the articles that I could write. And I used that as a way to pitch some you know, guys who had posted on job boards looking for people who could write financial articles. I remember my first project, I you know, grouped together a handful of articles plus building out a couple of website pages for $4,000. Uh, and that was our, our, our really uh, the first time we made a, a legitimate income stream outside of a more of a normal path. Now, if you wanna learn more about freelancing, I have a whole video on how to get started with freelancing where I sort of walk through my process and how to find your specific strengths and then apply that to what's available. So definitely check out that video if you're interested. 
but let's go ahead and jump to 2017. 2017 was a big year because I graduated from physical therapy school and Nick actually left his engineering job. So we kind of did a little high five <laughs> and swapped off our incomes. Yep. Um, but we still had Nick's freelance writing income and then also some freelance community management work that Nick was doing. Yep. Um, and it was also a big year because that's when we moved into the Airstream yep. and started traveling. Started traveling. Yep. So, again, just kind of making us think outside the box of how we could do things a little bit differently than this, the norm. This kind of reminds me that, you know, at the beginning of the video, we talked about how the big benefit to multiple income streams is stability during times of crisis. Mm -hmm. But another big benefit is flexibility. And so if one of you realizes that, you know, you really don't want to pursue this one income stream anymore, then you don't have to do that anymore if you have some other income streams that can work for you. This is when we really started to see some of that flexibility come to light and it, it's really going to come to light uh, during the next year in 2018. So we start 2018 off with Hannah's physical therapy job, my freelance community management work, social media management work. And then instead of freelance writing, I've now transitioned into what they call digital marketing. So I'm doing freelance digital marketing work, which is basically fancy for helping small business owners build websites and sort of Facebook ads and email marketing funnels to help them sell their products on the internet. And then our fourth income stream is YouTube ads. We really didn't make any money from YouTube ads prior to 2018, but 2018 is when we finally started to see that income stream. So now we're finally up to four income streams. But another thing to point out here is just the beauty of the freelance income, yep. because what you were learning through those freelance opportunities was helping us build our own totally. income stream. I was doing double duty, really, yeah. because we were making money from freelancing, but also learning new skills that could eventually be applied to help us build those income yep. streams ourselves. Yep. But that was all at the beginning of 2018. So in April, I actually left my full-time physical therapy job to come on and help Nick full-time with Mapped Out Money. So again, we saw how important that flexibility piece was. You know, we had income coming in from multiple areas. So it wasn't so scary to step away from one of them. Even though it was a significant part of our income, we still felt confident like, okay, we can build up these other areas and, and we know how to adjust and maneuver to, to do what we need to do. And we, we can leave the stability of that full-time job. So now we're into 2019 and we have all of those freelance income streams that we talked about, the community management and the digital marketing. Um, you've also got some YouTube ads coming in. And since I've stepped away from my physical therapy job, we were able to lean into Mapped Out Many More and expand um, to offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching and then to also um, do some affiliate stuff with yeah, Mapped Out Many. And some group classes. Yeah. So at this point, we're up to six income streams during 2019. It was, it was a really big year for us. It, it was also a big year because it was the first year that we actually made more money from our freelancing and our mapped out money business than what we would have made as a full-time physical therapist and engineer with the years of experience that we had. So that felt like a really big win because we've got these six income streams that are really contributing in a big way now. At this point, we haven't really talked a lot about how we built these other than just sort of giving you a timeline. So uh, if you want a quick rundown of how our business makes money, right, it starts with these YouTube videos. We make YouTube videos all about budgeting and managing your money and personal finance. And then we get money from YouTube ads, right, that play before or after these videos. We also get money from affiliates, right? So like YNAB, for example, is a big affiliate of ours that we work with. And if you use our link, we get a little bit of kickback from that. And then there's a subset of people, a very small subset, who will watch some of these videos and instead of you know wanting to just do it themselves, they would actually rather work with us directly. So they'll reach out and ask if we do one-on-one -on -one calls to help them learn how to budget and manage their money. We do live group coaching classes that are about five weeks long and we typically offer those a few times a year. Nick heads up all the classes and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I'm more in the background doing the video editing and publishing and editing podcasts and doing um, the workbooks that go along with class and all that kind of stuff, um, which kind of leads into how we got to where we are. And a big part of that was using the Strengths Finder 2.0 yeah. to kind of figure out like, okay, what are our natural strengths that we can lean into while we're trying to figure out different ways to make money? So Nick and I both rank really high for the learner strength. Yep. And Nick, not me so much, ranks really high for the strategic thinking. And if you've ever played a board game with Nick, you know that that is correct. 
So that played into him wanting to do the coaching and help people think through situations strategically and all that stuff that really suited his strengths. And then as far as me coming on to Mapped Out Money, my learner really suited that super well because everything we do, we're just kind of learning as we go. That's right. The other thing is you're also a very creative person. So all of the behind the scenes stuff, whether it be the graphic design, the YouTube thumbnails, the video editing, all that stuff, lends itself perfectly to you wanting and having a desire to learn how to do yeah, new things the stuff I like. and in a creative way because it suits like your natural tendencies and desires for what you like doing. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this at all and you're trying to figure out how you can get started building multiple income streams, highly recommend checking out that book, Strengths Finder 2.0. See what you're good at and then you can try and find some ways to take those strengths and apply them to skill sets that actually make money. Like I said before, I kind of lay out that exact framework for how we went about this in that freelancing video. Let's get on to 2020, which is basically the exact same six income streams from 2019, except for the freelance digital marketing work. At this point, we were making enough money from mapped out money, right, for the most part, for YouTube ads, affiliates, and coaching and classes that we felt comfortable sort of dropping the freelance digital marketing work still keeping the freelance community management work because it was a much smaller piece and then going all in on these other income streams. And that's kind of where we're at today. But that's not where we want to stop. We want to continue expanding to offer physical products, in-person events, downloadables, and hopefully eventually software tools. Definitely. And we also want to do stuff outside of mapped out money completely. So we're looking to expand our income streams by investing into real estate, hopefully later this year, ideally, and eventually maybe even starting some other business is down the road and of course investing in the stock market now we, we still currently invest in the stock market but because we don't take any money from the stock market and don't plan to for at least another 30 or 40 years we're not really counting that as an income stream like we mentioned earlier this is a collab video with kelly from freedom in a budget so be sure to click on the link on your screen to see her video on how she built multiple streams of income as always thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time